Are you interested in book collecting but think you can't because you don't feel like you have enough knowledge, money, or space? Do you feel that book collecting is merely a hobby for snobby old rich people? Well, guess what? It's not. Who am I to suggest such a thing? Hello, I'm Jess, a 32-year-old squirrel of modest income, and I'm a book collector. Now, by day, I am the manager of an online secondhand bookshop located just outside the Cotswolds in England. But while I have had a lifelong love of books, I really only began collecting them since I started working at my bookshop. And after breaking down a wall of preconceptions constructed by my own imposter syndrome, I realized that book collecting is something anybody can do. You may not believe me at first, but hear me out. Book collecting can be about so much more than you think. It can be whatever you want it to be. There are no rules. And it's just something I enjoy immensely. So I wanted to share with you some of my squirrely nerdy knowledge and hopefully help you find your inner book collector. So there is sometimes a bit of a divide between buyers of new books and buyers of secondhand books. Book collecting can involve either, but a good chunk of what I'm going to be focusing on here will be focused on the world of secondhand books because that's kind of my world, so keep that in mind. Now I had intended this to be one long comprehensive video, but there is so much to talk about that I decided to split it into three. In this first part I'm going to break down what book collecting really means and give you some ideas for starting your own collection. Then in part two, I'm going to give some information and advice about one of the more popular forms, albeit by no means the only form of book collecting, and that is first editions. The second part will also cover how to consider the condition of a book, particularly secondhand books, which can be applicable for any type of collection. Finally, part three will provide advice on where to look for books to add to your collection, including sharing my secret weapon, which I always use to find the best copy of a book at the best price. So if you want to stick around for the whole series, do make sure you're subscribed, ringing the bell, all that nonsense, so that you can be notified when the next two videos come out. So let's begin. What is book collecting? Side note, this is going to be by far the longest video of this little trilogy, so Buckle up. When I say book collecting, I'm referring to something a bit beyond just a gathering of reading material. One can have a library full of books without necessarily being a collector of books. Collecting comes down to something deeper, something that drives you to select that particular copy of that book. I started developing this series of videos a couple of years ago as something slightly different, but then I watched a fantastic presentation by Rare Book Dealer and one of my inspirations, Rebecca Romney, who you may recognize as the book expert on the TV show Pawn Stars. When I say collector, I'm not talking about this sort of stereotype of some really rich person who spends millions of dollars on a Shakespeare book. That is one type of collecting. Um, but it's only one of many different types of collecting. There are collectors of all kinds. Really, if you're interested in book collecting, you are kind of a perpetual student. If these videos interest you, I highly recommend checking out that presentation as well, which I will link in the description below. But in it, Rebecca busts a lot of myths surrounding book collecting and shares some of the collections of young women who participated in the Honey and Wax contest, which is an awesome contest. I wish I had known about it when I was of an age to actually participate. So I have pulled some of her points from that presentation, but in addition, I'm aiming to give you some tips on where to start, depending on what sort of collecting grabs you. I'll also show you different examples from my own collections along the way that can hopefully help illustrate what's possible. So open your mind and come with me on this little exploration of book collecting. Now, when someone says that they are a book collector, the first thing that probably pops into your head is the term first edition. As I mentioned, I will be covering first editions more in depth in part two. But and this is important, book collecting is not just about first editions, nor is it about limited editions, rare books, antiquarian books, or any other exclusive stereotypical category. There are so many ways to become a book collector. Collecting is really just another way of expressing yourself. Express yourself on a bookshelf. The best advice I can give you really boils down to three words. Collect your passions. Start by identifying something, anything you're interested in, 
and go from there. And don't be afraid to think a little outside the box. So when I said I didn't start collecting books until a few years ago, that's not strictly speaking true. The first bit of collecting I ever did started in my teens when I started collecting copies of one of my favorite books, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Some editions were given to me as gifts during my childhood, others I found at yard sales or online, but I don't think I paid more than about $8 for a book at that time. This idea of collecting copies of your favorite book is a great place to start and is still something I do to this day. For instance, I'm probably not alone in having a few different sets of Harry Potter novels. I've got full sets of the British and American publications, I'm working on collecting the first adult editions, and I've got the first two books published so far with illustrations by Nina Lima, who are the graphic design team behind the films. I've also started collecting copies on my travels in different languages, so this is the first Dutch edition that I bought at a bookshop in Amsterdam, not Amsterdam, in the Netherlands though, in Maastricht. I do have many, many other Harry Potter related books, including collecting nearly all film companion books I could find. I've done videos on those already. If you're interested, I'll put something up here. But still, my Harry Potter collection is somewhat modest compared to others. If you want to see the height of Harry Potter collecting, check out Peter Kenneth's channel, The Potter Collector. He collects every officially published edition in both hardback and paperback of all seven books in languages from around the world. Mad magical props there. But granted, his collection requires both money and space. That doesn't mean yours has to. Your collection can be one single shelf of copies of your favorite book. Maybe they have different illustrators or different bindings or, like the Potter Collector, are in different languages. But again, take that idea a little outside the box and you can go even further. Say one of your favorite books is, like me, Peter Pan. There are so many beautiful editions of this book out there, from old ones with the original title of Peter and Wendy, to new ones like this beautiful interactive copy illustrated by Mina Lima. But there's more than that that you can collect. There's also the original play, Peter Pan, The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up. There is Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, which was actually published before the more famous Peter and Wendy, and even some modern sequels by authors other than J.M. Barrie, such as Peter Pan and Scarlet by Geraldine McCoffrian, which is deemed as the official sequel. But dig into that history of Peter Pan a little bit further, and you'll discover that, in fact, the first appearance of the character of Peter Pan was in a novel called The Little White Bird. Now, while I will likely never own a first edition of Peter and Wendy, this is actually an early reprint, I do own a first edition of the first book in which Peter Pan ever appeared in print. It's far less well known and therefore much more affordable. I think I snagged this for about 20 pounds, but to me, I find this book just as interesting. Another book I've turned into a little mini collection is Fahrenheit 451. Again, I dug into the history of the book's publication and found that it grew from several of Ray Bradbury's short stories, which were originally published in science fiction magazines. I've also done a whole video about these if you want to check it out. But if you're interested in a particular book, you may find this sort of research and treasure hunting very appealing. I certainly do. Another avenue of collecting is by author, in which case you can collect in all sorts of ways. You could collect different editions of their books, but also you could collect biographies about them. Search for bibliographies which list all their work so you can help uncover those lesser known titles or find things that they even did for magazines or journals. For instance, alongside my copies of Matilda and the BFG and so on, I have a few lesser known writings from Roald Dahl. Whilst reading about Dahl, I discovered that his first bit of published writing was actually an anonymous war story published in the Saturday Evening Post called Shot Down Over Libya. His first children's book was then The Gremlins, which was supported by Walt Disney with the intention of making it into an animated film, although it wasn't to be. But I get so much nerdy joy from collecting things like these. Or taking it one step further, look for books that inspired your favorite authors, in direct or even indirect ways. If you're a fan of Jane Austen, for instance, keep an eye out for an upcoming book by Rebecca Romney called Jane Austen's Bookshelf, all about the largely forgotten female authors whom Jane Austen read and from whom she took inspiration. Maybe your Austen shelf will grow to include some of their works. If you are drawn to certain authors, you can absolutely become a collector in as big or as small a way as suits you. Another way to start a collection is by illustrator. 
Now, popular classic illustrators include Arthur Rackham and Ernest H. Shepard, but you by no means have to go down the so-called traditional collecting route. You've seen already that I've started collecting books illustrated by Mina Lima, both their Harry Potter related books and their classics. And these are all new books published within the last decade or so. Again, collecting is all about you. Perhaps my biggest collecting umbrella includes books that are connected somehow to Disney. My family have been decades-long Disney fans. My sister and I have both worked at the original Disneyland Park in California. As such, my main interest is predominantly within the era of Walt Disney himself and the original Disneyland Park. But within that, I have developed several sub-collections. One of which is books illustrated by Mary Blair, who is best known for her concept art for the Disney films of the 50s and 60s and for designing the Disneyland attraction, It's a Small World. It started when I discovered that there were children's picture books using Mary Blair's concept art, but then I began finding other non-Disney children's books contemporary to Mary Blair, which she illustrated or contributed to. It began with that single connective passion, Disney, and just went a little outside the box. Your collection could even be visually based in a broader way. I am in the process of collecting the first thousand books published by Penguin Books. Those began in the 1930s, but the design of the covers continued for decades after that. So that basic colorful 30s look was maintained for a very long time. And I think they're really cute. I am also rather partial to the sort of decorated cloth of the Victorian and Edwardian eras. This is a time before dust jackets were popularized, so the books themselves were just so pretty. Now, I'll admit, I have quite a lot of these that I only use for decorative purposes, but hey, why not? That said, it's not only old books that can be collected for their aesthetic appeal. A lot of large bookstores nowadays carry beautifully bound classics. You've got the Penguin Cloth Bound series, or um, Barnes & Noble has a big leather bound classic series, or another great source of beautiful new books is Illumicrate. I don't have any books from them myself, but I've seen some of their limited edition copies on the market and they are stunning. Many have this decorative cloth akin to those of a century ago, but they also sometimes decorate the page edges. Oh wait, actually edge decoration has become quite popular now. That could be something you could collect. Collecting books you think are just plain pretty? is still collecting. I know my sister has a shelf of her so-called pretty books. And they make her happy. Moving into an even wider field of possibilities, you can collect books based on a subject. This can be non-fiction, perhaps a historic topic that you're interested in, in which case sometimes all you really need is one book to get started. Then just check if that book contains any recommendations for further reading. I read and loved Darren Brown's Tricks of the Mind, and when I finished reading it, I was desperate for more. But luckily, in the back of the book, I found an excellent list of further reading recommendations, which I then utilized to track down more books relating to magic and skepticism and psychology and the other topics that I found really interesting in this book. But this doesn't have to be something academic, nor does it even have to be nonfiction. Perhaps you like, say, novels which specifically feature time traveling, or a grand spooky house, LGBTQ romance, or even fan fiction. Maybe you could collect books by authors who come from a specific region of a specific country. Referring back to my Disney umbrella, one of my biggest collections to date are the books that inspired Disney films. The original fairy tales and novels which served as source material, and even some books whose illustrations inspired the animation style, such as with Sleeping Beauty. In another area of my library, however, I have a collection of books that are all about books. A blend of fictional stories, non-fiction histories, and even some poetry, all with a strong focus on books and their creation. In fact, I recently did a video covering that little collection if you'd like to get some recommendations. Collecting a subject or genre can be as broad or as narrow as you want and can work for any budget. You can even collect books that transcend any specific title, author, or subject. A common example is signed books. Though it's not something I specifically look for, I do actually have quite a few signed books, some of which I got signed personally. For me, a signature is sort of a perk to a book I would already collect for another reason, but many people do collect signed books full stop. One step further is collecting associate copies, although this one can admittedly get into much more expensive and difficult territory depending on the person. 
An associate copy is a book that is somehow related to the creation of that book, such as a book signed by the author to the publisher of that book, or maybe a family member, but, and I apologize for continually reiterating this, you don't have to go down the traditional collecting route. Maybe you can collect books with signatures from ordinary people that you just think are cool. Perhaps you could collect books given specifically as Christmas presents with gift inscriptions on the end papers. Or perhaps books previously owned by people who share your first name. Perhaps simply books with interesting ephemera stuck between the pages. Maybe news clippings relevant to the book or simply interesting scraps used as makeshift bookmarks. I have an entire drawer filled with notes and tickets and receipts and just interesting things that I've found stuck between the pages of books. It could even be a collection of books with printing errors in them, a misprint from the machine or even the entire text block being inserted upside down, which I have seen more than once. Or you could make it more personal. If you're a traveler, maybe collect a book from each place that you travel. Create your own autobiography on a shelf. Can't travel? Well, Maybe ask your closest loved ones to give you a copy of their favorite book for your next birthday present. Put your heart on a shelf. You are only limited by your own imagination. If you're still watching to this point, I hope by now one of these suggestions has sparked something in you. But if not, let me quickly share a few more elements of my personal book collection that are even more outside the box. As I mentioned before, the heart of my Disney collection has to do with the man himself, who has really influenced the world in ways most people have no idea about. One relatively new sub-collection began when I watched a YouTube video about the restoration of Walt's offices at the Walt Disney Studios a few years back. Fortunately, when Walt died, the founder of Walt Disney Archives, Dave Smith, went through and meticulously documented everything that had been left behind in his offices, including all of his books. So they were able to replace everything to its exact position, down to the books that were left on his desk and everything on his bookshelves in order, even down to whether the spines were facing up or down or if they were leaning or crazy. But from that short video and from other photos I've found of people visiting his offices, I was able to pick out some of these books belonging to Walt, which would have been used for reference or inspiration for his work. Did a little research, figured out which editions they were, and have started collecting them. Oh hey Lil, I guess you're staying there. Hmm? Another small Disney collection began when I came across a photo of Walt Disney reading a picture book, and me being me, I decided I wanted to track down that book and get a copy of that same edition. I now have a few books that match photos of Walt reading them. The final part of my collection that I want to share as potential inspiration is my prop books. Can I put you down now? I've been a collector of prop replicas from films and television and theater long before I became a book collector, so it was only natural to blend the two together. This collection cross-pollinates a bit into other collections, but it is perhaps my biggest collecting passion of them all. I like to collect both replicas of fictional books that don't actually exist outside of the screen and editions of real books that are featured on screen as props. In 2020, the Disney Store began releasing journal replicas of the storybooks that are featured at the beginning of the classic animated films, plus a few replicas from Pixar films too. So of course I had to get those. I've also got some stunning replicas of books from The Wizarding World as part of my Harry Potter collection, and a few replicas from other sci-fi spectacles such as Doctor Who and Back to the Future. But I also have tracked down specific editions of real books, such as this edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, which if you're a fan of Breaking Bad you may recognize, and a selection of books that I spotted in the 1996 film Matilda, one of my absolute favorites. I plan to do a whole video about this particular collection, so if it's already out when you're watching this, click here somewhere. What I'm saying is you can actually not be a book person at all and still find doorways into book collecting. So I hope through all of that something has stood out to you to spark the start of your own book collection. If you have any other ideas for collections that I didn't mention, please do leave a comment below to help provide further inspiration to others in this lovely community. As I mentioned earlier, the next part of this trilogy will be focusing on first editions specifically, as well as considering the condition of a book when you're buying it secondhand, something that can be applicable to all types of collecting. 
The third and final part will then cover where to look for books to add to your collection. Plus, I will reveal my secret weapon when it comes to finding the perfect book at the best price. So stay tuned! A big, big thank you to my current 4,370 subscribers. And as always, be kind, be curious, and be effective. Bye! Da 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 title down to three words. <coughs> to a bagel. And even some modern seekers, like seekers? We're playing Quidditch here. That's very shiny. Which she illustrated or contributed to. Your collecting could even be visually blazed blazed. Fairy tales and novels, which oh wait, no, I've got books for these. I keep forgetting about my books. Where to look for books. How did I forget books? That was weird.